before we get into today like the goddamn video now i understand there are a lot of depressed sacramento kings fans out there and i do not blame you one bit i mean you guys have not been relevant for almost two decades now and honestly it's tough to watch because for a small market team y'all have drafted a lot of talented players over the past several years who i think have some potential and that has been the story of the kings for a while now high potential with no real results let me state some facts real quick the kings have not had a winning record since 2006 also so happens to be the same year they last made the playoffs both of those stand as the longest drought amongst the 29 other teams in the nba the kings have also had 11 head coaches since 2006 ironically just firing luke walton the other day the kings have also had only one player who was an all-star since 2006 and that was demarcus cousins from 2014 to 2017 so what does this all tell you i threw a whole bunch of facts right there but what does it really mean? Let's keep it 100. The Kings have been the worst franchise not only in the NBA, maybe across American sports since 2006. And over the past several years, I keep hearing about how talented their young core is. In fact, if you watch some videos back in the time, I've hyped De'Aaron Fox, and I think he's one of the most underrated players in the NBA who has not been an all-star yet. The Kings do have the potential, but the problem is it has not been fulfilled. In this year's draft, the Kings had made a very interesting choice by selecting Davion Mitchell, and out of the many lottery picks they have taken the past several years, what makes Davion Mitchell being selected so differently is that he has been viewed as the answer. And the core piece this franchise has been missing to get right back on track. So today, that's exactly what we're going to be diving into. Is Davion Mitchell the answer for the Sacramento Kings now and in the future? Before we get to all that, I need you guys to go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the goddamn video as always. And hey, enough talking, bro. Let's get it. So going over the numbers is something we always got to do first. Davion Mitchell at the time of this recording has averaged 9.1 points. 3.9 assists, 2.6 rebounds, shooting from the field at 38%, and from the three at 28%. If you've watched Davion Mitchell play, you will understand there are some players numbers really don't tell the whole story about. Alex Caruso is a perfect example. Draymond Green is another example. And in my opinion, Davion Mitchell is in that same category. Now remember those two names I mentioned, Alex Caruso and Draymond Green, because I'm going to go back to them later on. Davion Mitchell has been viewed as a lockdown scoring point guard. The reason why I don't qualify him as a two-way player is because his defense outweighs heavily, I think in my opinion, his offense. I can sit here and talk all day about his defense and tell you the same 100 things everyone else has told you about his defense, how he has held guys like Curry, Lillard, Mitchell, well Donovan Mitchell really, to under 35% shooting, and some far worse. How he has a complete menace on defense and someone who is going to give it all no matter the situation, I can sit here and tell you for hours about how great his defense is. The point is, you're looking at a future consistent all-NBA defender. That's what Davion is and is going to be going forward. Now, let's discuss his offense. Of course, very early, but from what I have seen, the critique I have can somewhat be looked at as a positive. Davion shows potential to be a consistent 20-plus points per game kind of guy, maybe a little bit above or below that in the future and I think he will get there. But from offense, I realized from watching him that when he is in scoring attack mode, it kind of takes away from Halliburton and Fox. And this could be a reason why Fox and Halliburton in terms of numbers have taken a eye-popping step back. Darren Fox went from averaging 25.2 points to 20 points and Halliburton went from averaging 13 to 12 points. Now, there's a bunch of reasons for this, but one of them, I believe, is Davion being installed with these guys and painting a picture of a future big three led by these three young guys. Remember, all three of these guys are guards and play outside the perimeter. So if that's the case, they gotta make it work. And from what I have seen so far, which reflects their record as well, once again, near the bottom of the West, while they may show the potential, it may not result in wins. Basically meaning, yeah, when you put Fox, Halliburton, and Mitchell out there together, it sounds nice, but will it work? And we've seen this year after year. There's only so many times you can say, give it time. And the reason for this is, going back to what I said about my critique for Davion can be looked at as a positive. Davion Mitchell is a guy who feels he's got to do it all. He's under the mindset that I always got to create. I always got to be involved. I got to make the big play for my team. And like I said, this can be looked at positively. It shows he cares. That mindset is a defensive mindset. That's something that works on the defensive end, which shows why he's such a great defender, but it doesn't necessarily translate on offense. There has been plenty of times where the flow of passes on offense at Mitchell, who would then ISO or make unnecessary drive towards a filled paint, guys like Fox and Halliburton who are talented can't necessarily get a rhythm playing with Davion Mitchell. Therefore, 
this isn't going to work in the future. And I'm not necessarily saying this is all Mitchell's fault and he's a problem. No, that's not the case. I think he should continue with the mindset he goes with, except be smarter about it. Now, going back to what I said earlier about Alex Caruso and Draymond Green, when I hear those two names, I immediately think about glue pieces. And that is exactly what Davion Mitchell can be. A piece that fills in the gaps for his team and sacrifices for the success of winning. Caruso and Draymond have been fantastic at this. I think this is a fit that Mitchell and the Kings can have that will actually result in winning. Davion Mitchell can be a great player, but on the Kings team, they don't necessarily need him to make the tough shots, drive in on two guys, or make crazy offensive plays. Basically, they don't need him to be a hero every play. Take that energy and continue grabbing rebounds, stay aggressive, put pressure on the defense, and now you just create opportunities for your teammates to score. He doesn't have to change the way he thinks, he just has to change some decision making. Sometimes it's okay to go possession without the ball. You can show value in other aspects of the game. And I think this will allow guys like Fox and Halliburton to take the necessary step forward to be the players we think they can be, which can ultimately result in winning something the Kings have long desired. I think Davion Mitchell is an incredibly valuable player. I mean, he fights for rebounds, plays amazing defense, is unselfish, crafty offensive player. And as far as the title of this video, is he the answer for the Kings team? I think if he can understand his talent and what he does on the court can benefit others more than yourself, which gives your team a better chance of winning. In this case, he is the answer for the Kings. But if he's going to be another scorer who limits the offense and other teammates and compromises possessions, then the Kings are going to continue having the same results, losing seasons. And it's going to be another young, talented player to come and go. But Davion Mitchell, as much as I love De'Aaron Fox, the success of this team is heavily predicated more on Davion Mitchell. I know it sounded like I was critiquing Mitchell too much, but I love watching him play. I just want to see him and the Kings succeed, man. I just want to see them win. Let's, let's keep it 100. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this. Don't forget to follow me on my Instagram, and I'll see you guys later.